tournament time. The NCAA tournament. The field of how many is it? 100 now set? No, 68. 68. That's right. Um, Kansas, Houston, Purdue, and I forget the last four. Yeah, you're looking at me, and I'm sorry. You was, about to say, you was about to say Gonzaga, really? Yeah, I was. And I was like, <laughs> actually, that's not right. <laughs> Like that's, I feel like that starts us off. On Alabama, the right. Alabama, uh, yeah, Alabama was, and they got the number one overall seed, which I was overall. a little surprised by. Yeah, it seems like they got the number one overall seed because they were one of Houston's three losses, and they were like, "That's good enough." They but played head to head. Here's Alabama's the thing, though, real quick: Kansas, I think, had seventeen quad one wins this year. Oh, you was in it for real. I mean, their resume was stacked. <laughs> I don't understand how Kansas. I know they lost to Texas. Shout out to Texas for winning the Big 12 title game. Because the Big 12, they just, everybody beat up on each other. And also, that's really portion, a, a large portion of it. Alabama won their conference tournament. Yes. Houston lost theirs to Memphis. Te uh, Kansas lost theirs to Shout Texas. Shout out to Penny Hardaway, by the way. Memphis getting in, you know, uh, winning the. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Winning the tournament, Conference USA tournament there. Yeah, I imagine all of that factored in when it came to giving Alabama the number one overall um, seed in this tournament. But yeah, first of all, like there's a couple things. Obviously, you know, who are you interested in? What what college basketball team are you like, yo, that's the one that I kind of feel strong about. I just kind of want to talk about the tournament mm -hmm. because one thing that I've noticed as, you know, we've even tried to maybe dabble in and we've been open about, uh, yeah, I need to get watching college basketball. Yep. It's getting about that time. Has it felt to you like it's been – pushed publicly like on let's say you're watching ESPN or FS1 or whatever like it felt like there was a point in time you get maybe even 10 years ago where you looked up and you were like okay it feels like it's college basketball time because I'm seeing this put in front of me I don't really feel like that yeah shout out to the NFL for that <laughs> in a yeah. lot of ways because yeah. the NFL continues to dominate when it comes to the sporting landscape but for the what two and a half three week period from you know March to early April this is typically where the NCAA shines its brightest with the NCAA tournament and the buzz around it, I think is still there, but not quite nearly as much. And I think part of that for me is I don't know who the hell a lot of these dudes are. And the college game itself, I think, has changed so much that the guys are not staying, you know, two to three years the way that they used to, to where you got a lot of the one and dones. And it's hard to invest unless you're a diehard, you know, we know our guy Will Chambers loves his Kentucky Wildcats, went to Kentucky. You know, Choppy loves his Tennessee Volunteers. Unless you're die hard in it, it's hard to keep up with the college game. And then by the time you get to the NCAA tournament, you're like, oh, the typical teams that are usually good at this are at the top normally. And by the time they get to the tournament, you know, you'll see what other kind of Cinderella teams make a run. But it's hard to keep up with the game these days. KG, can you name anybody on this Duke squad? Right? Besides the head coach? Right? Like, like, I got John Shire for you. That's, and, a, that's and about that, it. And that is you knowing more than a lot of people, I imagine. Like, yeah. I don't know that everybody knows John Shire. Isn't this his first full season? This is his first year, yeah. And I'm I, sure Kevin Hagel can run, run it down for by us. By the way, doing a fantastic job on the second half of the season with Duke, right? Like, because I remember I, I was like, oh, both UNC and Duke aren't good this year. Actually, Duke found a way to put a whole bunch of games together on the back half of this. Yes. I can't remember what the run was, so give me, uh, I do apologize, but they are a five seed. After looking like they were going to miss this thing flat out. And they ran it off in the a ACC tournament uh, and took out Virginia in the uh, the conference championship game there to get the uh, to get the conference title and the automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. So, yeah, Shire did a great job, especially in the second half of the year for, the, for Duke. Yeah, but it always feels like you can at least name like the big the, uh, a big player on some of these teams. Right. I know that there's a Flipkowski on uh, Duke. That's it. Kyle Flipkowski, that's it. That's all I got. That's all I got like, for you. And I mean, I'm and not trying to say that I'm, <laughs> I'm good. Not, yeah, I'm not trying to say I'm the big, you know, college basketball guy, but it feels like the average uh, basketball fan could name a whole bunch of these. And I feel like the basketball player, that college basketball player that everybody can name right now is Brandon Miller and it ain't for basketball. So that I just find that fascinating. Now going into the actual tournament, which teams do you like? Are you interested in here? Okay, this is not going to engender, you know, uh, you know, Give me a lot of fanfare with, you know, a lot of people. But Your Missouri Tigers? Well, I mean, no, shout out to my Missouri Tigers. You know, got to the SEC tournament semifinal. Uh, comfortably into the tournament. You know, shout out to my Tigers. Didn't they get a four? Uh, I believe they got a seven seed. Okay, fantastic. My bad. Seven seed. I appreciate the... Uh, I yeah. tried. I tried to sneak them up a little higher for you. Uh, Houston's is really, is really good. 
<laughs> Kelvin Sampson and the Houston Cougars, they've got a legit national championship contending team uh, that I expect. Now, I have to go back and look at their side of the bracket because I think they've got a couple of matchups that they can get taken out of. Uh, they have the possibility of maybe playing Iowa or Auburn. Indiana is in their pool yes. as their four. That's a good team. Obviously, mm -hmm. Texas is in their region. And that is. is one yep. to worry about. Um, outside of those, I mean, look, Miami was really good in the ACC this year, but I don't know that I'm afraid of them, especially with the way that Houston is, it's, uh, if if Sasser plays. Because remember, last year they went to the Final Four, and their best player wasn't on the court. I had forgotten that. Sasser did not play. That's right. In last tournament. And in that championship game again against Memphis, where Memphis, on, understandably, whooped their keisters, Sasser didn't play either. So, like, if Sasser doesn't play, that's a problem for Houston. But if he does, oh, boy, that's a scary one. Um, yeah, I would love to see Texas and Houston in an Elite Eight dog, game. Texas is such an interesting thing because they are going to the tournament under an interim coach. And, like, not just going to the tournament under an interim coach, they look like one of the better teams. Yeah. And probably one of the possibilities of winning because I was telling uh, everybody on the airwaves on Thursday, I believe, since 2002, there have been uh, – or, sorry, every – championship winner besides UConn has been top 21 in offense and top 27 in defense. Mm. Um, and there are not a lot of teams that fit into that. Texas is one of them, one of five. Right? It's Houston, it's Alabama, it's UConn, it's Texas, and it's Purdue that fit those parameters. And one of those teams is coached by an interim right now. And three of those teams are number one seeds <laughs> that you were talking about here between Purdue, Houston, and Alabama. So that gives you a true indicator of what I think a really good indicator of what how good these teams are. And look, Terry has done a phenomenal job. Think about the circumstances that he had to take over the program with the entire Chris Beard situation. Who apparently now he's the new head coach at Ole Miss uh, is now Chris Beard. But for Terry, yeah, the charges were dropped. We don't have to think about any of the other details of what happened and how the police said that they had they saw actual you know physical marks and stuff they're like well the charges were dropped so we can hire them well it's good to know the old miss is out here hiring people who you know allegedly put their hands on women really quickly i know you guys are talking about the big power five schools but mm -hmm. shout out oral roberts oral roberts has a 30 and 4 record this season and uh will chambers was talking about this over the weekend mm -hmm. that's that's a team to fear right there I, mean, I know that they're in the summit league and this that in the fifth but come on now give a little respect to oral roberts i never heard this that in the fifth that's different I like. I it. haven't heard that in a while. That's a that's a good one. Thank um, you. I usually hear this that in the, the third. third. Yeah, yeah, oh, a okay. couple more. I respect this is a new it. One. I like it. Um, but yeah, Oral Roberts historically, if you go back, you know, to some yesteryear, Oral Roberts gives you give you problems <laughs> in the tournament. And you know where that took me to? Should I should I this year should I actually believe in the West Coast Conference? Because like usually it's the Okie Don't do it. But this is the thing. Don't do it. This is the thing. There was a point where they had like. Two or th like three teams in the top twenty-five or something. Like they actually got some good teams. St. Mary's look good this year. It's always Gonzaga and St. Mary's. That's all I got for you. And Gonzaga finally made it to the Final Four. You know, a couple years ago with you know Jalen Suggs in the group. Yeah, everybody thought they were supposed to win, huh? C correct. And then Baylor was like, actually, no. Um, so, real quick though, before I forget it, North Carolina. I think this is another reason why there's not a lot of buzz this year. The, one of the teams, uh, by the way, the national runner-up last year. Didn't even make the tournament. In fact, Carolina was so upset that they didn't make the tournament when the National Invitational Tournament, otherwise known as the NI team, came calling. Carolina told them, yeah, we're good on that. We're not going to They were so embarrassed. They didn't want to show their face outside the house. <laughs> it was like, take it to the crib. He was like, y'all can keep that NIT Invitational. Uh, y'all can keep that. And you want to know what's funny, though? It, it, they, they rejected the NIT, but there's two really decent schools out there. Shout out my Sam Houston Bearcats who couldn't even get to pass the Western Athletic Conference, and they're trying to do something in CUSA next year. Not the point, though. Point <laughs> is, is <laughs> point is, right. though. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm glad you got that out. All Point right. is, is UNT is in there, and UNT is a decent squad. I've I kind of had the pleasure of following them a little bit this season, and they they haven't been that bad. Carolina said we got too much damn pedigree for, for your little NIT tournament this year. After this is the crazy part, about North Carolina, first AP number one team in the country to start off the year to not make the NCAA tournament. That is how historic history. in history. History. That's how historic. North Carolina's fall was from last year to this year. AP number one, not even in the tournament this year. Hubert Davis and that group got a lot of work to do <laughs> in Chapel Hill. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, though, like, I don't know that I looked at their squad and saw anybody that was like, yo, that dude is nice. 
Baycott's a good player. Good player. All right, look, he's he's not on the level that yeah. we're talking about in those ways. But I For guess sure. also some of that is the ways in which talent can go all sorts of different places. They can go to the G League and get some level of money. They can, you know what I mean, go to one of these other, you know, instances that will allow you to kind of circumvent um, the college route. Or you can even, there, it feels like there's all, a whole lot more programs you can go to outside of the Blue Bloods where you feel like you still have that opportunity to make it to where you want to go. So, yeah, no, I find that to be all very intriguing uh, myself. Um, do you have, like, a Final Four that you're looking at earlier? Or are we still worried We're still worried about it? Also, while you think about that, mm -hmm. the Ringer kind of put together some, you know, a bracket breakdown, and they said that the worst seeding in the tournament is Utah State, Missouri. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they, like, obviously, the Missouri is the 7th seed. Utah State is the 10th seed. You would expect Missouri to be the favorite, right? Nope, two and a half point underdogs against Utah State. Utah State's a good basketball team. I think they were a little underseeded actually coming into this tournament. Yep, that's uh, what that's Ringer. That's what the Ringer is saying. Yeah, Missouri is going to have their hands hands full with Utah State um, going into this tournament. So I, I wouldn't be shocked if my Tigers get knocked out in the first round. Um, also, before uh, my final four, uh, here's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Kansas. Um, to come out of the West region. By the way, they got shafted, I thought, with them not being the number one overall seed because they had a chance to get to um, to Kansas City in order for the Sweet 16, I believe. But anyway, I'm going to go with Houston coming out of the Midwest. I'm going to go with Kansas coming out of the West. I'm going to go with I'm gonna go with Marquette coming out of the... Isn't uh, that Shaka? Is yes, Shaka's back That's there? right. My man's won a conference title now in not one... Not two, not three, but four different conferences Shaka Smarts won a conference title in. So shout out to him. Uh, but I'm going to go with Marquette, the Golden Eagles, uh, coming out of the east and out of the south. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Arizona. I'm going to go with Arizona coming out of the pack. I like it. Ar Arizona quite literally has the best offense in the nation. It's they like, do. Like they are playing on fire and that's why i also like arizona out of the south uh give me houston uh give me like where you went marquette give me duke like i oh, understand you're gonna do it I, you're gonna do it Duke. what do we talk okay. about when we get to turner Tom? who's playing who was a high basketball that is a wildly um, they might not get out of the first round we we're talking about oral roberts just now they may right. not get out of the first hey, round man, it's, it's one of the dreaded 512s yeah and <laughs> look i'm just talking right now i ain't filled out a bracket yet i will change my mind because you know what i won't remember this conversation right now <laughs> <laughs> and that's then, why you get the rewind button on the odyssey app. oh true true uh, also give me kansas i guess kansas is so damn good uh bill self is going to be back for kansas had a health issue that kept him out of the big 12 tournament again kansas losing to texas in the big 12 championship game by the way, it's so random. Shaq was at the Big 12 title game this past weekend. In Kansas City? Hanging out in Kansas City for some reason. He just, just popped up in Kansas City. Okay. He came for the barbecue, apparently. Uh, but the NCAA tournament. Look, these people are about to revolt. You know that, right? Every time you mention Kansas City barbecue, these people lose their minds on you. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. Okay. Fantastic.